The illegal wildlife trade is a multi-billion dollar global business. It's trade and not subsistence that's doing the damage. If there's a guy who goes into the forest and kills a pig to, for his family to eat, I don't think anybody would really have too much problem with that. What happens is, is gangs go in the forest and they wipe out the area. They catch a, lo a huge amount of what lives there and then it'll get sold uh, to restaurants in Phnom Penh perhaps. A lot goes over the border to Vietnam and perhaps on to China um, and it's that kind of trade that, um, that is doing such damage. It's not just a poor forest dweller finding food for his family nowadays. It's, it's, it's business. Wildlife Alliance started in Southeast Asia in uh, Burma and Thailand and right after the war we came to Cambodia because these are very important three-range countries feeding the wildlife trade to China. And when I arrived in the year 2000, I was really appalled to see wildlife being sold everywhere, in houses, in markets, in restaurants, on sidewalks. The wildlife trade in general in, in Southeast Asia and in Asia, what is severely lacking is law enforcement. We know that the trade is of enormous proportions and is extremely lucrative. We know that the market in China, instead of reducing, is increasing. Uh, it's a very organized network of professional traders and suppliers. It's been fantastic seeing the multifaceted approach that Suwana, Nick, and all the others that we've worked with here in Cambodia have uh, through Wildlife Alliance. It's education, it's reforestation, it's community-based uh, ecotourism, which helps provide another economic incentive and opportunities for the people beyond just going into the forest and having to find wildlife in order to keep their family uh, fed and with some income coming in. There's also the enforcement side of things. Uh, we actually went out on raids with the forestry department with the military police and with Wildlife Alliance and went into people's homes, uh, into restaurants and into shops to see if there was wildlife there. These usually were based on tips that they've gotten. They have a hotline, they have informants. It's a well-organized uh, enforcement side of things. But unfortunately, it's really a well-organized underground criminal activity that's happening. The owner of this land is the big trader of Homa and it had been seized many times last three, four years ago. But until now we just found information. That's why we're coming here for operation or searching. So to find this lets you know that you, it was correct in what you thought, but also probably doesn't provide the real the, evidence. The real evidence yeah, that because the animal not been here. The wildlife traders, they don't wait. They change vehicles three times on the same road. They, they hide the wildlife under the seats in the doors. The Wildlife Rapid Rescue Team has certainly deterred the wildlife trade, I'd say about 70%, and the rest has gone underground. It just makes the trader's life more difficult. Our challenge, I would say, in progressing towards a more massive impact is to be able to work transboundary with mobile units on the other side of the border. Bottom line, law enforcement. You can reduce the demand, but by the time we've reduced the demand, all the wildlife will be gone.